All right, guys. So we have just beaten the Callisto Protocol, and uh, I gotta tell you, uh, my total experience with the game has been a uh, wide, wide, I should say. And uh, I have to say, uh, this game is uh, pretty solid. Is it one of the greatest uh, horror games out there? Uh, absolutely not. But is it a good game? Yeah, I would say it's a good game. Uh, but does it really match this? You know. You know, does it really, you know, compare to the original Dead Space? Yes and no. Like, in terms of the atmosphere, the heart, especially the jump scare, uh, and to a certain degree, the overall story and the characters-wise, uh, definitely there's some similarities to, or at least some nods to Dead Space. Although, personally, I still think nothing beats Dead Space compared to the survival horror genre. And this game is definitely not a survival horror, more like action horror game. So, um, don't really expect, you know, too many spooky things. Well, there will be some spooks, but this is, like, you'll be playing this game mainly for the action. So, like I said, don't expect this game to scare you out, out, out of your life. Uh, expect a lot of action, expect a lot of bashing, a lot of shooting. And, uh... Best way I can compare this game is that this game is definitely played a lot more like Resident Evil, especially in terms of the creature designs, since it's like based on body mutations and all that. And to a certain degree, even the gameplay kind of plays like Resident Evil 2, with a little bit not of Last of Us with the melee combat system and the dodge mechanic, although I don't think in Last of Us you can dodge, but the melee combat is definitely very, very similar uh, to a certain degree. But overall, though, uh, the game wise definitely I think it lives up to my expectation and maybe to a lot of other people expectations as well uh, I think it's a solid game uh, From the beginning to the end although the game can be goddamn frustrating though Although that is entirely my fault because I played the game on the hardest setting and you should not do that because uh, This game will absolutely punish you on the hardest settings and you're probably not gonna have a good time Maybe you will maybe not uh, me personally, I want to go to hard settings because you know I'm looking for the challenge, and two, I'm also the biggest reason is is I'm also doing it for the achievement. So that's the main reason why I played it on hard to the end because I really want to get that achievement. But you know, also just a little bit of a challenge too. You know, make it a little bit you know a little bit challenging. But I think uh, some of the enemy placement in this game is a little bit bullshit, especially when it comes to open those chests. Uh, but Overall though, I did quite enjoy this game. Uh, this is definitely the Dead Space sequel, the Dead Space 3 sequel that we definitely all wanted. This is what Dead Space 3 could have been, in my opinion. To, to, but honestly, I've never played Dead Space 3, so I can't really say it's bad, but from what I've seen, it, it doesn't look like it really lives up to the hype. You know, uh, compared to like the first two games, I think the first two games are so high in my list, especially the first game. Cannot wait to play the remake, by the way, by next year. But other than that, though, yeah, this is a like I say, definitely a true successor to what makes Dead Space great. You know, is it perfect? No. Is it a Dead Space clone? Sort of, but not really. Uh, I think this game is in a way just more of honoring Dead Space more than trying to make a copy of Dead Space and uh, like I said, I think they did a pretty good job in it. Uh, the graphics uh, in this game is definitely probably the biggest highlight. This is definitely one of the best looking games I've seen in a very long time. Like the photorealistic and the artistic style that they're going for the game definitely fleshes out you know, everything. Especially in t uh, when it comes to the character. The, the character models, the facial you know, expression, and all that stuff. It, it, it just, this game is a great looking game. Like, like everywhere you go, this game, regardless, it just it does not look like shit. It looks, you know, pretty at to, to a certain degree. Some pictures looks almost too well for that matter. Like this game looks that good. Like I'm not even joking. This is definitely one of the best looking games I've played in terms of the horror genre this year so far. But time will tell once this Space Remake comes out, you know, next year. Uh, would that game top over Callisto? I have no idea, but I have to play the game for myself to figure out if, the, you know, the District Remake is, you know, pays true to, you know, to, the, to his roots. Uh, but I think it's, you know, it's safe to say, you know, they're both completely different games, so, you know, don't want to compare those two games too much. Like I said, the, the way to play is definitely different. Melee combat is more... Uh, apparent in this game, uh, less on weapons, uh, uh, but on this space, weapons is your best friend in that game, and melee is your last resort. <laughs> so, 
But yeah, in terms of the presentation, it looks great. The atmosphere, the art direction looks great. The characters look great. Animations also look fantastic as well. And uh, they even got some big name actors too to place uh, a lot of the characters in this game too. And they look pretty much how they look in real life. And that's pretty fantastic uh, that they got some of the big name actors and uh, some small name actors here and there. But you know, you recognize their faces once you see them. They're like, oh shit, I didn't know that person was in, in this game. So it's pretty cool that you know, you know they're still able to make you know, you know, good looking games. You know, photorealistic to the point it looks pretty good, and the characters themselves is based on the actual voice actor, which I think is a huge plus in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, graphics wise, looks really nice. Uh, the creature design, all the little egg sag and all the little sh you know stuff going and all infesting, it, everything just looks disgusting. Especially the creature, some of the creatures just fighting this game, extremely gnarly, and uh, they did a fantastic job. The art direction team on the creature design, they look very alien, they look very nasty, disgusting, intimidating, and uh, like I say everything in this game just looks good, uh, as far as I can tell, you know. I think they did the job pretty, you know, pretty good on making the game look good, maybe atmospheric, uh, almost at time for very cinematic as well. Sound design, very important in the game. I think the sound design is pretty good in this game as well. Like some of the creatures, you know, the, you know, sounds that they're making here are pretty gnarly. If you can stop gargling and some other weird stuff and all that stuff. Uh, but the sound design is really good, especially when you use that stun baton. You, know, you can feel the oomph you know when you freaking you know hit you know those creatures with the baton you feel that impact i'm pretty sure you probably feel the impact more if you play on the controller especially if you're playing with the ps5 controller with the haptic feedback you're probably going to definitely feel all that haptic feedback coming through with the through the controller and i think probably that's probably the best experience to play in this game probably play with the controller although i personally play with mouse and keyboard because i like the accuracy and sensitivity on the mouse when i shoot things so that's why i play with a mouse and keyboard most of the time but i think for the best experience playing this game with the controller is probably for the best so that way when you do those melee attack you feel that oomph that vibration from the controllers and if they have haptic feedback you definitely gonna feel all that haptic feedback you know coming through to your controller which i'm quite curious how the game will play on the on the controller i do got both xbox and playstation 5 controllers so uh maybe the haptic feedback will kick in once i plug in a ps5 controller i don't know uh, that's an experiment i'm probably gonna try out uh but so far yeah this game the sound design definitely uh definitely keeps you on edge you know sometimes when you hear the enemies going to the vent you hear them coming through the vents and then i'm popping like what behind you the sound design is really good i think this is like uh it uses like 3d and binaural sound as well so you know which direction they're going to be coming from when they are in the vents you know so it, it would be really so it's really nice that you can keep track on the enemies you know to a certain degree so I do like the sound design of this game. I think they nailed down the creature designs, the sounds, some of the spooky stuff that happens throughout the whole game. And especially on the weapon designs, like, you know, the sound designs on some of the guns sound really beefy. You feel that impact and the melee weapon, definitely feel that oomph. But personally, I think you'll probably be a lot more impactful if you have a controller, I think, because uh, you can feel all that haptic feedback and all that stuff going on. So, play with a controller, I think, for this game is probably recommended, in my opinion. But overall though, yeah, sound design's fantastic, man. It's it's really good. Like they went all out on the sound design. Uh music, uh yeah, issue it's definitely very dead space, uh with the freaking music, very ambient, you know, very high tension. You know, you begin to air with the music starts and you know, start going and then then everything just goes crazy once a creature pops out or you know, a little head from the egg sack pops out and bites your neck, you know. So, so on that, yeah, sound design in this game, the music design, you know, the way it was designed, the 3D sound, it, fantastic. It works absolutely fantastic in this game. Now, let's talk about the biggest, most important thing about this game, and that is the gameplay. Uh, at first, I didn't really like the, the melee combat in this game and the dodge mechanic in this game. Uh, that's do that. That's because due to the main issue that the game had when it first came out, with the game, you know, just stuttering everywhere. The game just barely ran like at 10 frames per second. And combat is very important in this game, and, and also you need a lot of frames, of course, to have a proper combat experience. We'll get to the performance stuff 
later on, but I want to talk about the gameplay. But at first, I really did not like the melee combat system at first, uh, especially with the new dodge mechanic that the game implemented. I thought was kind of crap at first, but once the game, you know, actually starts to run, you know, when the frame rate starts to get more stable, uh, you can definitely get the hang of the dodge mechanic uh, in this game. And the melee combat is also, although not the most advanced melee combat system, it, it gets the job done, I would say. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You do like a, a four hit combo or you do like a light attack and a heavy combo attack. And pretty much you just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, dodge, dodge, you know, dodge like you're getting punched by Mike Tyson and then and then with him with the follow up with the with the either heavy attack or a light attack. It's the choice is up to you. But uh, but overall, you know, that yeah, the combat uh, very simplistic with the melee combat. It's not no, it's not too crazy, but it gets the job done. And once you get the hang of the dodge mechanic, uh, I definitely sound to like the melee combat a lot more. I think it's a little bit more enjoyable once you get the hang of it. You know, it makes you feel like you're in control of the situation most of the time. And then when you, you know, get that finisher on the, you know, on the last bad guy with the melee weapon, it's, oh my god, it's just, you know. Uh, Alright, speaking of that, uh, I forgot about the little details on the graphics and on the presentation too, you know, whenever you blow one of those creatures head apart or you just dismember their arm and then you blow their face, you can see all the giblets being spread on into the wall. And, and then and all the blood and all the guts, the brain giblet, eyeballs. Like, they went all out with the gore in this game. I, I forgot to mention about the gore shit. So, yeah, the gore in this game is <laughs> pretty damn top-notch, I would say. Definitely on this Space level, if not a little bit more gorier. Especially some of the gnarly death animation you get in this game is, oh my god. It can be pretty damn brutal. Especially when you fight some of the bosses, too. Golly. Uh, but yeah, the gore in this game. Uh, if you like gory games, gory games, you would love this game. Uh, extremely gory, extremely bloody. The, the, the amount of times you could die in this game is extremely brutal and gory as well. So just, just keep an eye out for that when you do get your ass pwned by the creatures in this game. Just prepare for a brutal end for, for your character. Uh, so we did talk about gameplay, uh, the melee combat. Uh, yeah, nothing too special. The weapons wise, uh, Pretty straightforward, you point and shoot, you know, at the limbs. But you know, when you're in melee combat, you do get an opportunity to shoot in the weak spots. And that would be the good time to pull out your gun and shoot that weak spot. That way they'll, they'll be able to die a lot faster. If not, you might be able to kill them pretty fast. It is going to be very important to do that mechanic, especially when you fight bosses too, specifically. So keep that in mind. And uh, always, always conserve ammo, especially if you are playing on the hardest setting. Conserve those ammo if you can. And uh, and just prepare yourself because there's like only very few self sections in this game, and you try to run away, it's not gonna go well for you. The creatures will really catch up to you, and they auto lock onto you as well, which is my gripe uh, in combat. So uh, don't try to expect to run away. Uh, just do what you can, kill as much as uh, as much of the creatures as possible, and just move on. And uh, yeah, that's probably my, my gripe uh, personally is that. You can't really sneak away from the, or run away from Pacific enemies, you know. You just gotta have like a lot of luck to try to outrun the enemies because they will catch up to you and then they will freaking, they will try to murder your ass. And yeah, nothing good can come out of that. <laughs> I don't want to spoil too much on the story. I, I would like for you guys to experience the story, you know, yourself when you play the game. Although if you watch the full playthrough, uh, you well. Know, I guess you know. Yeah, I know how the story it, you know it's gonna unfold, but the story is is pretty. Uh, I have to say, pretty generic. I, you know, uh, it's not you know too crazy. It's something that we have really seen before. You know, we see some weird infection going on, go underground. We got the corporation doing experiments. You know, yada yada yada. The story is pretty generic at most, and the characters I have to say are pretty generic as well. Not as memorable compared to playing as Isaac Clarke from Dead Space. Uh, Jacob Lee, you know, like I say, uh, Jacob Lee, you know, the main character player, uh, he keeps the game flowing most of the time, you know. He's there to make progress, but, you know, he's more just a, just a your standard regular guy compared to Isaac, you know, just being an engineer, at, you know, doing, doing his job. But uh, but I can see to try to make him, you know, try to turn him into like another Isaac Clark, you know, type of anti-hero. Not really anti-hero, more like a hero uh, than an anti-hero. Uh, but... 
other than that, most of the characters in this game are kind of mm, they're, they're kind of forgettable. I do like Captain Leon Ferris though. Uh, you know, he is the the bad guy in the game. I do quite like his character, uh, uh, especially that when he's played by you know the same actor who played a star killer from the saw uh, the Force Unleash uh, Unleash game. He's also in Dinkin, uh, Dinkin St. John on Days Gone, which I didn't know because he looks completely different in that game. But yeah, he's uh, uh, Dinkin St. John in Days Gone as well. And now he plays Leon Ferris, you know. Very underrated uh, actor. I think he needs to be in more projects, in my opinion, because that guy is... <laughs> when he gets in, you know, when he does a mo caption and then the acting, man, like I said, he does a pretty good job. Uh, underrated actor. Needs to be in more projects, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, most of the characters in this game are kind of forgettable, I, I don't know. Uh, like I said, the story is, is trying to set up like an, I don't know, into like a new sequel or potential, you know, story DLC continuations, something like that. But uh, I can see them trying to, I, I can see them making a sequel out of this game. Uh, and would it, would it do it? I probably will play it. And I'm really hoping they will improve the game. Uh, you, know, you know, on a lot of aspects like gameplay, level design and all that stuff. Alright, so the level design in this game, I have to say, um, it's kind of kind of mediocre in my opinion. Like, I do like the exploration and stuff, but it's more of the same thing that you do. You get into just most of these bra fights, and uh, you'd be crawling to vents and vents and vents and all that. And you know, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. I think the level design definitely needs a, li a little bit, a lot more touch up in my opinion if they're going to make a DLC or a sequel of this game. Because, you know... And to me, it just it feels like I'm just doing the same thing over and over again, only that we're finding stronger variation of it, you know, another enemy we really face. And then that's another thing I want to tack on to. This game needed a lot more different enemies. So far, this game only had, like, what? Four different, uh, maybe three to four different types of enemies at most. And that's pretty much it. You're going to be finding the same generic, you know, you know guys. You got to find the, the guy that spits shit at you. And then I wouldn't even count the little critters, you know, as an enemy. Well, there are, but, you know, they kind of rarely show up in places where you have to shoot them. Uh, but, yeah, there's really not much enemy variety. I think they should, you know, when they make a DLC or make a sequel, definitely amp up on enemy variety. Because the, at least this space soon when it came out, they amp up on the enemy vari variation you know, quite heavily. And I do like that. And, uh... I'm a little bit disappointed that the gameplay doesn't have like any random spawns of enemies where to keep you told on you know, like the first day space game has so it's not very dynamic in terms of like the you know the of the whole game itself so I kind of wish they had something like that maybe Dead Space Remake will have that feature where an enemy will spawn occasionally to keep you on your toes you know if you decide to pick your nose or eat chips you know or decide to pick up food or something but uh, overall I don't uh yeah the level design definitely needs to be touch up uh especially in, in terms of enemy placement and balance on hard setting fucking twice man some of the enemy placements are bullshit in this game sometimes and do you you'd be killing one finding one enemy then another one spawns behind you and then another one comes uh, no back after that and then it's like what the fuck how am i supposed to stop all that you know the enemy placement in this game can be pretty bullshit you know you'll be finding one enemy you won't even know it until you get bitch smack and then you get insecure on hard settings so yeah some of the enemy placement is a little bit bullshit in this game and uh especially that you know i you know that these monsters are so polite that they're willing to take you on 1v1 rather than attacking you all at the same time i kind of wish they had something like that but maybe that would make the game a lot more less fun so maybe that's why they added something like that but in this space when you get thrown by necromorphs there's no mercy you better shoot all the limbs down or when they get close you pretty much screwed this game does not have that urgency, you know, that tension, that desperation. You're trying to stay alive. There are some moments like that, but you know, compared to the Necro moves, you know, trying to, you know, sprint at you at full speed, you know, you know that, you know, we don't really get that much in uh, Kalisco here. We get like very few moments, something like that. Especially you get like finding the big guy, the big mutation guy. He sees you, start running at full speed, like. Oh. And then you try to run away. Uh, yeah, there's only very few moments like that that has in this space. And uh, yeah, I just feeling that this game needs a needs a lot more variety in terms of you know level design, combat, especially facing a different enemy type as well. 
But it's so, like I said, it's so didn't ruin the experience for me. It's just minor gripes that I have for the game. Uh, but yeah, so far though, yeah, the game, uh, the gameplay wise, it's simple. It gets the job done. I do like the different uh, guns to get to. My f personal favorite, the skunk gun, the hand cannon. And surprisingly, the assault rifle is really good too, and the riot shotgun. Don't get the tactical pistol. For God's sakes, do not get that piece of shit. That is not a good weapon. But the assault rifle really surprised me. The assault rifle is probably one of the best weapons in the game uh, in terms of like fast you know, rate of, and a high rate of fire gun. Once you get it matting damage and maybe get the stability you know, upgrade for you too with the full grip, man, I'm telling you, that gun absolutely freaking slap. Absolutely fantastic weapon. And especially the ammo that you know you get is pretty cheap too. You can stack on those ammo and you can lay the waste on a lot of these creatures too. And that's what I really, really like. But personally, the hand cannon, skunk, riot, uh, gun, those are my three most favorite guns. And the three weapons you probably should only use too, because if you're going to start a new game, I don't recommend you use those three guns. So that way you get the ammo top for that specific weapon. So, because you get a new weapon in inventory, then you know, the game's going to struggle. Okay, you want tactical pistol ammo, or you want assault rifle ammo. And then the whole game, the whole spawning system on the ammo gets absolutely fucked that way. So, so yeah. Uh, I do like the guns though. Uh, there's no way you get all the guns fully upgraded, unfortunately, because they. Once you get to the highest tier, it gets way, it gets way too freaking expensive at that point. So uh, overall, though, yeah, gameplay wise, pretty good. Now let's talk about performance. Oh my god, performance when this game first came out was awful, very unacceptable for that matter. It's to the point every time you load to a new area, there will be a stutter. Everywhere you go, there will be stutters everywhere, everywhere. Like me, I don't like stutters. I personally would rather deal with frame drops more than stutters even though frame drops not good either but the stutters is probably the most worst experience you can get in any game that you played like imagine trying to do a melee combat against a creature and then the game will stutter every 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 time you move make some you know crazy movement like it's unacceptable the game should not shouldn't shouldn't have came out at that state luckily they did patch it out in the day one patch so that is a good thing but then again, they knew they knew that they fuck up, and they still released the fucking game still in its current state, and it is unfortunate because now the games and the company's repetitions are kind of affected by it. Now the game is sitting at a fifty percent uh, review now mix now on Steam, which honestly the game should be at least mostly positive from my uh, my personal opinion, but. Yeah, the game when it came out was mostly negative because of the stutters was awful, and they knew they knew the game was already popular on PC, and it still fucking released it. So, so that is a, a big red flag for me personally. Like, if you, if you know the game's not gonna work on popular on that day, just fucking delay it, delay it, iron out the optimization, then release it. Like, what the hell? Like, and that's the biggest problem with today's gaming industry. Release the game half fast, then we fix the game later. That's the mentality, you know, that all these companies and so sometimes the developers itself, you know, you know, think it's the right call to do. Yeah, we'll release it and we'll fix it a patch later. No, the game should have been running 100%. Like, yeah, the game could be, you know, buggy here and there, but the game's gotta be running stable at least. Like, doesn't have to be 100% of course, but you know, it has to run properly. And you're gonna release a game that doesn't run properly. Guess what? You're gonna get bad rep. You're gonna get bad reviews. So uh, that's my major gripe is that the performance was shit for this game when it first came out, and they they knew the issue about it too, and they still fucking released it still. So note to self: you make a sequel to this game, don't fucking make the same mistake. Fix your shit first. Iron out the optimization, then release the game before you fucking release the game. You know, and in such a poor state. Like, it's not that hard, but I guess to some degree they probably have no choice, you know, if it was a publisher's idea. But luckily, the performance is fixed with the, with the latest patch that they released for the game. So the game is definitely a lot more enjoyable, and especially the opening, because I did we played the opening scene for this game, and that was the most uh, uh, power of a hog on your computer altogether. And yeah. I can definitely confirm that running that whole section is a lot more enjoyable, a lot more smoother now. So, 
Good, good curls on them, but they don't get a pat on the back for releasing the game in such a poor state, so they better step up the game when they release the, you know, the DLC or the next sequel for this game, potentially. Uh, I don't want to went on too long for this game. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, I would say I'll probably give this game maybe like a 7 out of 10. Uh, it's not the, not the greatest uh, game, but it's also a good game as well in terms of the horror genre game. Do I recommend this game? Uh, yes, I do recommend this game. If you're really, if you're a fan of, uh, you know, action horror, survival horror game, especially Dead Space, since this is made by the same director, the same creator from Dead Space 2, by the way, uh, you would definitely like this game. If you like, you know, gore, the violence, and all that stuff, you, you're definitely going to like this game, especially. Uh, but yeah, I do still recommend this game. I probably still recommend you play this with the controller, because I think the gameplay will be a lot more impactful with the melees and the guns and all that stuff. But, you know, you choose your way to play the game. But overall, yeah, I do recommend this game. Will I recommend full price? Mm, nah, not really. I will wait for this game to probably go on a sale at first and uh, pick it up when the game is, you know, has more content to offer and, you know, especially with that Soy DLC plan for probably next year. And uh, we'll see how it goes from here. But overall, my experience for Kalisco Protocol, Frustrating, but also a very enjoyable experience. Uh, this will definitely get you Dead Space fix for sure. But I'm so looking forward to Dead Space remake. So we'll see. How, we'll see what this uh, the future for this game hold. Uh, when the DLC comes out, the Soul DLC comes out, I will definitely be coming back to this game. But in the meantime, this is it, guys. This is our end. This is the end playthrough for the Kaleidoscope Protocol. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the playthrough. Uh, if you guys did, hit the like button in this video. If you guys didn't, then hit the dislike button. It's up to you. If you guys want to see some more other games that are similar to this or any other games you want to suggest for me to play, leave in the comments down below. And I'll check them out. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's my final verdict. 7 out of 10. Would recommend playing this game. Uh, would recommend buying this game on sale. And uh, hopefully you guys uh, uh, take a look at this game. See if you, you know this is the type of jam or not. But... On that, uh, Kaliska Protocol, good game, not the greatest game, but overall, I like it. That's all that matters. I like the game, and it kept me, it kept me going, playing the game and being it. So, I like the game. That's all I have to say. Uh, but leave your thoughts in the comments down below what you guys thought about the game. I'm, I'm really curious. Uh, do you guys hate it? You guys love it? Let me know. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna end here for now. And until then, guys, I will see you in the next one. Peace.